so true. It's about, it's like, it's the generational immigrant trauma thing. It's not trauma. That's the thing. Your generation will paint everything to be traumatic. It's not trauma. Hello, namaste. Auntie Zarna here with the Zarna Garg family podcast. So excited to be here. We have a full house. All the Gargs are in. We've got my daughter who is a junior in college, Zoya, my son who's a senior in high school, Bridge, my little one, my middle schooler, Veer Garg, and my husband of 25 years, Shalab Garg. We're all here today and today we're going to talk about the fun topic of spring break. What do we do? How do we use that time? How do we have fun? There are so many stereotypes about spring break. There are so oh, many stereotypes. I know, stereotypes. I know, I know. I want yeah. to go to Miami. No, you're not going to Miami. Oh, by the way, okay. spring break is for adults too, right? Not just kids. No, it's not. First of all, there's no spring break for adults. Uh, but there are many, many stereotypes about this. And we're going to get right into how the Garg family celebrates spring break, what we use that time for, and how we encourage everybody to use that time and to have fun in their own families. So let's get right into it. What are your best memories of spring break? So yeah, now that you're out of the house. What do you think of when you think of spring break? Uh, lots of rest and recovery. I think of yes. spending the entire break rewatching TV shows with the boys, eating really good food. Honestly, it's such a... I like spring break just to rest, but I do wish that I was more active in my planning for spring break. I feel like all my friends are going to like Barcelona and... Hawaii and all I want to do is go home and I, I want so that you're not coming home this spring break next week right you're doing something no she's I'm coming, coming home. home what do you mean she's coming oh, home I thought you had plans no, no that she's is not coming plan. home for the summer the plan is she comes home that's the plan oh. why are you disappointed in I'm that? not disappointed I thought she had something more fun to do that's all. no this is the no, funnest this thing is, so I'm yeah. actually so excited to come home okay. exactly Exactly. We are a family that likes to hang out. I know it's shocking to you, Shala, but we like to hang out and spring break is actually fun because for the first time, we don't have to wake up and run, run, run. And we don't have to be like stressed out about work, even though I'm sure we're all working during spring break because we as a family tend to use that time to load up on the work that's coming up and to find projects that we like to do together. And is that your memory, your guys's memory of spring break bridge? Veer, what do you Hell think? No. Of I just sleep. Like, Wait, like what? thinking of it now, I definitely spring break. I like it. We just eat, we stay at home, we watch TV and stuff. But when it comes to my memories, I always think of like Miami or Hawaii. That one time or Mexico. I always think of that. Like when I'm talking about my memories, what what reminds me of spring break is definitely going to probably Florida or some some beach. Right. Okay, so it, now that we do have spring break coming up, and I offered to you we could go to India, then why did you say no? <laughs> India is not Florida. There's a big difference between India and Florida. It's all the same. It's sunshine. It's really oh, not the same. It's it not, not the not same in, kind of sunshine. It is. You the don't same even let us sunshine. go to the pools in India. Like. <laughs> I do let you go. What are you talking about? I do let. Yes, there are rules around it. There are rules <laughs> around it. I'm not going to deny it, but I do let you go. And they would we, love to see you guys if you do. There you come. go. There you go. You uh, guys should I'm, go visit your grandmother. <laughs> Why okay. is it? I mean, you can, mom can stay here, but the three of you can come. Well, here's the thing everybody living abroad has this one common gripe, all the children, that every holiday we end up going back home. That we're not able to do the things that a lot of other kids do, and we all end up going back home. Is that something you guys also remember from your childhood? No. No. What do you mean? Like, we, we didn't go back home that often. Then... Oh, Wait, what, what is back s- home? Like, you mean like you know, seeing other kids going places and not going places? No, and also having to go back to India or having to go back to places that you don't really want to go. We never had to go back to India, though. But well, at least you, I didn't. You don't you were, remember. You because young, we, because yeah. we stopped. You're the, you, Braveer, are the reason the Garg family stopped traveling to India. Because when you were two... And we were flying to India, all of us. Actually, it was me and the three kids because dad was going to come late. You stood up on your seat. You took your bottle of water and you emptied it on the woman standing and sitting in front of us. 
Oh, I was that... tra- traumatized from that flight. Eighteen hours of apologizing <laughs> and giving this woman everything I've ever owned. After that, I swore to myself I'll never go back to India and I'll never fly a long distance flight it until you so guys crazy. are older. It was so crazy, Veer. You actually just had no. You didn't even like say anything. You just did it as if that was a normal thing to do. It must be an irritating woman. Otherwise, oh. Veer doesn't do stuff oh. like that. Oh, oh okay. 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 <laughs> you were two years old, and right, she was irritating. She was just sitting quietly in the seat in front of her, him. That was her big crime. No, but that after that we stopped going because I couldn't take it anymore. I mean, what ended up happening is we were spending so much money, all our precious travel time, and it just felt like the most stressful thing ever. to go back home and then to deal with all the stresses that come with being part of this big extended family and all of it and honestly i put the end to it but now i would like to restart some spring break traditions if we could go somewhere right now where would you guys want to go like a beach miami. thing miami yeah miami is our like favorite i would like to go to europe <laughs> europe like am i participating in this or not Like, okay. I, so, where would you like to go, Shalab? Okay. I would yeah. like to go to Europe, but not not like London. I would like to go to Europe, proper Europe, so Switzerland or France or something like and that. And do what? And eat really high quality food that tastes like food, as opposed to the processed food that we eat here in America. That's and then it. I would like That's to run in their beautiful weather, admire their beautiful women, you know, shop. Uh... Um, okay, and I then call my fine. mother in the same time zone. Why don't mm. you want to ever go visit your mother? I do. I do every year. Do you not know that? I, I know, do every why year. Don't, well, why don't you make a spring break plan and say? I would have gone this go. year too had it not been the you know the April thing that you're doing there to start with. And I thought I'll combine the two together. No, but what about taking the kids? Why is that not your? Priority? I did take bridge, and that was the bridge. Can you tell them how good of a vacation that was? No, that was like my one of my favorite vacations. That was ever, not your favorite sure. vacation. Stop it. Just staying in a five star hotel and flying like in a comfortable way is not a favorite vacation. Yeah, and Zoya, I I, I don't think your friends when they're going to Barcelona and all that are just sitting in a five star hotel in Barcelona. I'm guessing they're actually exploring the city and the yeah, town. Yeah, that's true. They are exploring the city and the town. I would say with spring break. especially as a college student now when you are working internships over the summer it is so crucial to go back home right because your entire summer my entire summer i'm going to be in the bay area which is new for me and last summer i was in london the whole summer and obviously i don't want to give up like really va- valuable work experience but otherwise if you don't go home for spring break i don't even know when you see your family unless you live near your family during college. And so my thing about spring break is I don't even know like I I think it would be really sad if I wasn't coming back home. Like I'm so excited to go home. I'm But, really looking forward to eating out with you Zoya. Oh, are we going to okay. yeah, okay. Okay. Ser- Serafina yeah. again? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Do you What guys ever have... Okay, Canada. I love Canada. Are you kidding? I like I, would love... I like Cali. I would I would But go I really like any- Cali cuz we flew men. I I like the Okay, the all right. It's a, it's it's expensive to fly mint. You have to work to be able to do that. <laughs> And a, a question for you, do you guys ever feel envious of your friends who are doing exciting things for spring break? They're going to fancy places or events. Yes, like did I you do, guys for sure. You no, shall have you know. I do. No. I absolutely do. But but like you have friends who buy tickets to go for very expensive sporting events or like Taylor Swift or whatever. Does do you ever feel like I wish I could do that? No. no. And I know that when we have spring break, we usually load up on like getting ahead with our schoolwork. Usually we end up booking extra sessions with the tutor. When you guys were prepping for the SAT exams, I remember you did a lot of SAT prep during the spring break. And this is a very Indian trope 
this idea that, you know, the Indians only spend their time studying. But it's actually true for us. And I liked it. Did you guys like it? Or was this like a problem for you guys? Well, you made it really fun. Honestly, you made such a great effort. I remember when I would study for the SAT or whatever over breaks and I was working. It was so fun because I always knew at the end of the night we'd watch a movie together or we'd eat together. And it was never it never felt lonely. I think that people have a tendency to want to do spring break and do these over glamorized like very very unique experiences because they're not happy where they are and we're so lucky we live in new york city like people want to vacation to new york for spring break so we treat our spring break as if we're vacationing in new york and i think that's i think that's i mean we just did an episode on why it's a benefit to live in new york another benefit to living in a really bustling city is you have no desire necessarily to go somewhere else for some sort of experience you can get it every single time by just living in the city yeah right and how about for you, Bridge? Is this the same for you? Like you just got done taking the SAT and prepping and college essays. And we had to use a lot of the breaks to write those essays, to get ahead on all the prep that you needed for your college admission. The breaks are like the most important time to do work. But yeah. I never felt envious of anyone because I always thought, I always, even today, my mindset's always been, if I don't do my work, then someone else is going to pass me. And that always bought that bothers me more than any sort of envious feeling of saying, Oh, I should have been going to Miami or anything. It's just knowing that what I'm doing is going to work. What about you, mom? Do you feel like as a parent or as a mom, right? You want to have, I, I don't know what it's like to be a parent. I don't know if I'll ever know what it's like to be a parent. Cause I don't know if I'm ever going to have kids. You're going to have kids. But, but, um, like, as a mom, I know you always want to make sure that we're getting like the most out of our experience and you're the one who's, you know, putting all these experiences together. Do you feel sad ever that like, for example, Bridge, Veer and I seem to just love to work, right? But do you ever get concerned like, oh, maybe the kids should go to like some stupid vacation, like, or go some crazy place? Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I wish we could be on a beach for a few days, just us, because we do have fun when we're on yeah. a beach in the sun. It's and I don't care what beach, like, I don't really care to go to Maldives or anything. It's all the same. Once you get in the sunshine, to me, it's all the same. I mean, so quality the, of water matters, Rana. What are you talking what? about? You what are you talking about? Get in the water. Since, what? Since when you are you getting in the water? You, you don't really swim. go on the beach. You don't but I know what quality of water looks like. You just stand by the poolside. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, and you, you stand on about? the poolside for Because I don't know how to swim. Otherwise, I would be swimming. No so one is swimming. We're just water. standing. We're dipping our feet in the ocean. You don't even do that. Quality of water. Yeah, that's and another issue. That's another issue with our breaks, mom, is that you don't give us... Now that I'm an adult, if we went to Florida again, there's a lot more stuff I would do now than I didn't do back then. We're all jet skiing. Like, I, no. I might go to the club. I might... Go the like the age of the ocean. Club is twenty one, not eighteen. <gasps> the and the and the hotel we stayed at, I could have went downstairs. But bridge, you don't drink. You don't. So drink. I can try all these things now that I'm adult. Yeah, but I feel like can. I never got to try that. You're technically was, you know. allowed to drink, but you don't. I mean, you're not. Is he allowed? No, he's not no, allowed 21. to drink. But I know that you have friends who drink, but you don't. Yeah, drink. but I, I'm I mean, still not. I I don't want to drink, but that doesn't mean I can't try. Let, new let me explain to you something about like jet skiing. If I go to if yeah. we go to Florida, I'm 100 percent jet skiing. There's no conversation. Yes, and now one. now you can maybe I don't know what the rules are, but maybe we can even talk about it. I don't personally like the idea of doing anything adventure because anything that risks your life is not worth it to me. I don't really care how fun it could or could not God. be. And, uh, but I, you know, I understand that at some point you will be old, old enough to make that decision. And for that some, reason, I am. no, you're not there yet. That's what the and, 18 year mark is. And, and that's why I hate uh, like those adventure parks and all, which your dad seems to like. I don't know what we have I to do with somebody. Parks. My best memories of vacation in the spring break is going to Universal and sitting on those and to Hershey Park once with Bridge. Yeah, that was and one, when he was little, Bridge and one of his friends and uh, his dad. That was an amazing, amazing trip. And there, in those times, Bridge nothing... used to hate being on rides that went upside down. I think now he doesn't mind, but at that time he used to hate going on rides that were upside down. Like the roller there boosters is, that went upside down. There is nothing to be proved by riding upside down on a thing. There's nothing. You're proving nothing. Millions of people do it. It's absolutely dumb to put your life at risk like that. For what? You don't know anything about this I mean, ride. I'm not a big Disney fan, but we love Universal. 
What were you saying, Veer? They want the adrenaline rush. No, the adrenaline. I can give you adrenaline run. We can do like a timed math quiz. That would be like, go, 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 That's go, not go. Adrenaline. No, we're doing yes. all the water adventures. If we go to Florida, if we go, if we go anywhere, we're, we're trying out all like the landscape adventures. Like if we go to another desert, I'm a hundred percent riding in an ATV. No, absolutely. I will die before I let you ride <laughs> after the ATV experience. disaster. Tell the story. Tell the story yeah, that we had with Zoya. Zoya, you want to tell the story? So when we were in Phoenix, which was a great vacation, by the way, we had a blast when we were in Phoenix. Um, we, I don't know who approved this between you and dad, but I we planned ended up- it. Sadly, I thought it would be like a Sadly. fun little excursion and it was so dangerous. So essentially an ATV is like a miniature, like roadside vehicle that you can drive through the it's like desert. like a bike. It's almost like a bike and it's yeah. motorized. And so mom had planned this excursion where we went to the desert of Arizona. It was properly the desert. The the man was telling us about machetes and snakes and jumping choya, like all these things. And drinking from cactus. And drinking from cactus. It was wild. So I got on the bike and I was driving this ATV. And then all of a sudden, the road of the desert got really narrow. And the bike, I could feel it flipping over. Like I could feel it going to the right and tilting. And it ultimately flipped all the way over on top of me. But because it was like caved in it didn't hurt me like it was just like it was almost like if this is the bike I was like in the dent of the bike so I was completely this fine is, this is all happening while the four of us are sitting in a car behind her no on an ATV on an eight on the bigger say? ATV we were driving one too we were on the bigger ATV yeah. right. and, bigger, then, like, and then I one. see you literally jumping out of the ATV and running oh my god I jumped out of I, my bike thing that I was on and I was like oh my god Zoya because they the guy who gave us these ATVs told us that not only are the ATVs deathly dangerous the desert is so deep, which I didn't imagine. I thought we would just be at the periphery. We went miles into the desert. It was so deep that there was no cell phone coverage. If you even want to call 911, you can't do that easily out there. It was the most stressful experience of my life. And in addition, <laughs> in addition to the stress of being deep in, after we were deep in the desert, the guy who took us there said, you never enter the desert without these three things. Oh my and God. he said, do you remember that? When he yeah. said, you never enter the desert without a gun, yeah, without uh, water, uh, no, without a gun, without a knife, so you can cut the, the, the cactus Cactus. open for water. So you don't bring water. You never enter the desert without a gun, without water, and without, there was one more thing. There was some sort of medical thing. Yeah. And I'm sitting there looking at my bag of Purell's and Kleenex. <laughs> Thinking we're all going to be eaten alive today because inside, <laughs> deep inside the deserts of Arizona, there are signs about mountain lions. There are signs about Why wild animals. Why did you bring Purell? Just because you I don't have know, Purell? Because in my desert, I thought it was dusty. That's what I was focused on. I don't know what <laughs> desert I was imagining. And we were miles in. There were signs about child trafficking. It was the most stressful. You know, honestly, I've been so stressed out. Even taking kids to the ocean, which Shalab knows nothing about because he doesn't go to the ocean. But I take the kids to the ocean side all the time because I like the idea of it. But it's the most stressful thing for me as a parent because you cannot underestimate the ocean. The one current, all you need is one current to pull you in. And in fact, Veer, when he was little, was it Veer or Bridge? It Shalab, was, it was, was in Hawaii. It was, it was Bridge in Hawaii. We were in Hawaii. So Shalab, me, Zoya and Bridge were holding hands in the ocean in Hawaii. And, and a big current came and almost dragged B- Bridge in. Like three of us had to pull him out at the same time to make sure that he was safe. So all these vacations that look so beautiful and the photos are like ooh whatever on Instagram the amount of stress that the mother especially has to deal with I can't even talk to you about it and the father in that case I remember thinking how expensive these vacations become for for a family's point of view part of why I promote the idea of staycations and staying home and having fun is because I know that parents try to be cool 
and parents try to like act like it's no big deal but vacations drain the bank balance in a way that we can't even explain to you guys mom one thing that i've noticed though is that a lot of moms go on vacations by themselves like i don't know if that's true of dads but i've seen that it moms go- i went i went for a vacation by myself on manishankar's birthday party remember okay, last year okay yeah but so i feel like I- to atlanta yeah. To Atlanta, yeah. I feel like I don't see either of you ever really take vacations on your own. I mean, I for the most part, if anything, you guys have always included us in your vacations, and obviously that's really generous to us. But why not? Like, yeah. why why do that? I mean, I have a big social life and a lot of friends. Your mother no. does not. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> he has an invisible social life but okay sure okay. the truth is that you need to have a social life and good friends to be able to do that <laughs> and your mother does have that social life but so you should ask her why do you not take those vacations but i'll t- i'll give you a few reasons one i actually love spending time with you guys any minute that i can get i want to be with my kids the first one the second one or the third one i really really you may not consider me your best friend but to me you guys are my best friends all the four people in this room am i still on the wait list no. you're on the wait list but you're on it which which is an honor okay that's huge and, that's huge and i'll tell you the people who go a lot of times women go on uh, their own journeys and and literally and figuratively i think because when you're traveling with the family it's truly not a vacation for the fam- for, for the, the woman yeah, yeah it is yeah, so sense. much work and i feel like i find the hi- hybrid solution in all of us staying home and taking it easy while we're supposed to be on vacation because at home the systems are in place for me to make my life at least somewhat comfortable the idea of leaving all that and going somewhere else and rebuilding a whole system is actually painful for me so yeah. i stopped doing that but if we can all be home be with each other do things that we like eat and drink whatever we want within new york city do whatever crazy things we want to do uh, that to me is the best vacation but i want to go to something that bridge said and i i just want to point out another I reason that's why it was so something. much fun i i don't like maybe it maybe we can, can next week bridge when the yeah. is here Yeah but I can. I just want to talk about something that Bridge talked about really fast because it's a growing trend in America and I want to point this out to you more and more kids your generation are not drinking alcohol is not their thing right I'll tell you a lot of what happens in these vacations and a lot of what people find exciting is going getting drunk eating out sleeping in when you're the only person on the table who's not drinking it's actually boring after a point The whole point of being drunk together is doing silly things together but if you're the one sober person in a group of 10 who are doing silly things after a point you're just like what am i doing here I know that You know though. what i mean I know but i want to tr- like i'm allowed to I'm just talking about trying things I'm not even talking about like doing it consistently but i do know that I mean every single time i go out with my friends usually most of them are getting drunk so it's like th- i understand what you're saying But it's just about the fact that now I'm 18 so a lot of the stuff I couldn't do before I could do now. You it's know, about trying freedom. stuff. Out. It's about freedom like going shopping <laughs> by myself in Florida, like yeah. doing all like the s- semi dangerous that. things. But you can do that shopping, you're never going to have resistance from me on that. I'm talking that. about like you know the thing where the boat is like the boat is moving fast and you're holding onto the things on the water. Yeah, yeah, and, water like, jet ski. That's something you would never love to do. Yeah. Oh, no, Not I jet think skiing. that's water skiing. Water, water skiing. skiing. Water no, skiing. No, no water skiing ever. Oh my god, no. Yeah. See, like that's something I I would be able to do now that I'm 18 that I want to do. Actually, speaking of that and speaking of spring break, do you guys ever feel regret that we didn't teach you how to ski? That's no. another thing we never invested Everyone in. Everyone know who skis gets injured. <laughs> one of my friends, ever, my friend, yeah. um, one of my friends was skiing in like Switzerland. He's he's like a huge skier. He like came 19th in nationals and He like 20 people died in an avalanche um while skiing and he saw all of them. He saw scary. them die? Yeah. That's uh, Oh my god. Oh my god. That is not okay. Guys, that is not okay. You every know Every single person, mom, you're actually onto something here because yeah. every single person I know who's been skiing, who skied consistently, any in any capacity has either injured themselves in a pretty wild way has seen something extremely traumatic or know somebody in their family or close circle of friends who has experienced either of the two you're actually yeah. honestly onto something 
and people yeah. still do it it's the whole coolness of it you look cool on a ski mountain in the and outfitting and it's so expensive and it's like you have to you have to buy all this equipment and like honestly i would the only appeal to me of going to a ski resort is as everybody knows i'm obsessed with snow snow is my favorite thing that happens in the world i would go just to hang out in the snow like not like not yeah, I, I understand like. that playing in the snow I get you you guys don't know when I was younger and I I lived in Ohio for many years and Ohio has a lot of ski resorts now you have to understand and this is true also of adventure parks none of these things are maintained at the level that they should be maintained it's very expensive yeah. the tracks the machinery the equipment people kind of just guess and a lot yeah. of these companies think it's good enough and if one person dies the cost of that one person dying is worth the millions that are going to go through and have fun so yeah. i remember That's when true. i was your guys is and so they don't care who that one person is but i care deeply if that one person is one of you guys which is why yeah. i keep you away from it yeah. i remember when i went and this wasn't even skiing it was like it was that slide you know that it's like tubing or it's, i think slide? it's called tubing no oh, it was yeah. in the snow It's like this metal slide that you it's, sit it's, in. It's too oh, big. Oh, I did that. I did that at my school overnight trip. It was so much fun. And so we I did that one time with my friend. Okay? Let me tell you how You how, did that? Yes, and it no was a way. lot of fun. Just so you know, it was a lot of fun. It was six of us that were seated in a certain way in this thing, in this metal thing, and all of us had to like stack ourselves a certain way to fit in the thing, and it was fine. I happened to be in the middle. So the person behind me there were first people in front of me my really good friend back in that time my best friend around then 20 years old mona was in front of me that slide it turned out was so poorly maintained that we went down we went down her the side of her leg got caught oh in the in the rail so the whole slide down first the, the pant ripped and then you can imagine what happened by the time we reached the bottom the whole thing covered in blood oh my the god the whole thing and i like i remember Stop. being and you know what we, that was not the first time they had been dealing with that all the time i remember looking at the guy who did this and thinking where is your apology and he's like oh oh we're having the paramedic will be here any minute almost as if this happens every day don't make a big deal about it and and back then had there been social media the whole world would have seen but but it looks so cool and it looks is so fun is she okay now or was she okay after she was fine but she had to get stitches on the whole side of her leg we had to go oh, to the emergency room was, it was a most painful traumatic incident that oh i God. witnessed and had to deal with because i was there with her it was just her and me we went together thinking we're going to do something cool together and <laughs> and it so. reminded me that people and i'll tell you a lot of these sports and i i don't this is going to be a little this is going to be a little problematic a lot of these sports are white people sports they're extremely privileged activities extremely privileged they're expensive they're designed for their lifestyle they're designed for the things that they value and they <clears throat> somehow thrill seeking is something they value the immigrants and brown people don't have to look far to, i mean that to, sounds a little judgmental sir now come on i like some of those things too i'm not right you don't shall i Okay, but we're not sure if you're white. My or thing what. is, you know, actually mom, I do think you have a point. I do think that you have to be a certain degree of right like one thing that really stuck with me that I learned while I was at in college is when you start a company in Silicon Valley and you raise money, there's something called like a founders like if you if you raise a certain amount of money you basically have to agree with your investors contract in the contract and say i will not put my life in any degree of risk exactly like I, like as in i like i will actively and that that extends to thrill seeking sports it yep. extends to it extends to doing inappropriate things on the internet with women yep. right like yep. there's very specific uh conditions to actually being able to raise a certain amount of money and agree to that clause because essentially they're putting their you have to be financially responsible enough to be able to say I'm taking your money and therefore will not take any risk exactly so, i 
I ever since I heard that, my idea of these thrill seeking risk things has totally changed because if that is the bar, then why should anybody be doing that? I don't know. I, it's just definitely, it definitely put it into perspective for me. Or like Kevin O'Leary, I think always talks about how he'll never be caught dead, like putting himself in some sort of like risky situation and that life does that for you anyways. So why would you, you know, maximize your probabilities of doing that? So it seems like all the people that care about their lives and so care. what is the riskiest I, I like thing? fundamentally what is the disagree riskiest with thing each individual you can disagree is. i mean i just I, it's something that i've been thinking i about. just disagree with your and mom's whole take on this whole safety thing and key man insurance or did this person needs to stay alive yeah it's this key man so insurance it's key and man. this person needs to do everything they can to make super valuable to the company you can't die so give up these freedoms in order to make sure this company runs you value your life then you're not doing anything like that's such a such a like highway ro- way of thinking of things. It's like, I'm on the highway. Everyone else is on the road. That's the way I'm looking at this. Cause so many people want to go and have some fun and want to take some risks. I know people who go skiing and come back and say, that was the greatest thing ever. That was so fun. We have to go back. If I wish we could do this every weekend. If it wasn't so expensive, there's so many people who like to not even take these big risks, just play football in the park or something like that. Then mom would consider a risk that I don't even think is a risk doing, doing these half, Whatever. A bridge, a bridge. Okay. I, I think you, it's a very- listen, you are of the age to make these decisions, first of all. But the attack that happened to your face where you were assaulted and your nose was broken happened at a football game. And I, I don't want to, I don't want you to put yourself in situations where, especially teenage boys, young adult boys, they, they get triggered and tripped over games, wins and losses. And that can, that, event itself that attack could have escalated so easily i don't think you realize it so, so and, to your opinion what is life supposed to look like just that's, like, that's what i keep saying is at it just, home and exactly stay at that's a what computer, saying. just do your work and just die come on that makes it's no just, sense mom, it's just I, work I, work I, work i kind of agree with mom but i kind of agree with by at the same time the issue wasn't that he was playing football the issue is that he was playing football with the wrong people he was playing yeah. with some randoms in the park <laughs> instead of playing with loyal friends that he's the, the way that you guys are viewing life is that there's I the, agree there. It's it's like a video game and where if you reach a certain amount of money, you win the video game and that's it. That's what everyone should be doing. Every single person, every citizen of the United States of America should be just trying to make money or even people of the world. But there's so many other things that you can do. And I just I just think that your mindset on the fact that you want to make money and because me, Didi and Vera were raised in such a way that we were always told like, we should be making money and trying to do that. Like, I agree that that's such a large part portion of life and everyone should aspire to, but there's other things to try. I, I would never live my life with the supreme safety that you leave, live your life. I agree and with, I, these, I think, yeah, yeah continue. These, I don't small, agree these small things happen where like these, uh, not small things, these injuries happen. I got my nose broken, your friend, um, something bad happened to her leg. These things happen, but that's just a part of like the, that's a part of it. You have to, you have to understand that for every a hundred amazing adventures, there's going to be a one bad one or even for less than that. For every 10 amazing adventures, there might be a bad one. I, have if to you're say gonna, I agree with bridge. If you're going to let go of every single adventure because you're thinking of the bad one, it's just not a way to live life in my opinion. Yeah. I, 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 and I think bridge, there is obviously a balancing act. There obviously is right. And to Zoya's point and Zoya, I'm going to give it to you in one second. I'm just going to point this out. If you're building a big company and taking investor money, just so you know, it's not an option. That's a condition. So you can say, I just never want to enter that space. I just never want to build anything that big. I don't want to play that game. And that's fine. If and you work that, for a company in a salary yeah. job, that's not an they issue. Don't they don't care. Don't but that, that's indicative of a lot of other yeah. issues. They don't <laughs> care because if you die, they're going to they replace quick. you with another you in one minute. I'm not saying that taking, getting key man insurance or becoming a big CEO is a bad thing. Like if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. And I would agree with it. But as a child, as someone growing up, that's something that everyone should, everyone should try to have these adventures. And I think the one thing in our life, I never really complain about anything in our life ever, but we do live a very, very, very safe life compared to everyone else, especially in New York City compared to everyone else in public schools compared to everyone else. We live an extremely hyper safe life. And honestly, me playing football is one of the most, I think, like outside the box, safe things our family has ever done. Like ever. Yeah. Outside of dad driving a motorcycle once, me driving a bicycle every two months, like is considered like skydiving almost. 
<laughs> well, it is I think worse than skydiving in New York City. Driving a bicycle in New York City, people have glorified riding a city bike. Go see the statistics. You think I'm making this up? I take Go the subway. See. That's dangerous. That's not the same thing. I've never said anything about the subway. I don't like it, but I don't say anything about it. Okay, fine. Get around. Be safe and get around. But riding a bike, this is the problem. That the 10 noisy people who do these things make it look cool and safe and simple when it's not. Look yeah. up what happens when, if we were living in an idyllic little suburb of America, these would not be issues we would deal with. But living in New York City, and truthfully, it is true that we create as much of a bubble as we can because there's only so much stress I personally can handle when I'm out on the road. There is truth to that. I'm not I understand denying that. it. That, that's why we always <laughs> respect it. Like, it's not like we go out of our ways to be rebels. I never, I barely ever do anything that's outside of our bubble. But I'm just saying that it's just not a, the supreme life is not to live your whole life with key man insurance. You should not like try to be the person who is so who considers themselves so valuable their whole life that they can't try these adventures they have to be the the one who becomes a ceo then then does this like i understand it once you get to the position where you take on investors and they say you need to do this i understand it take it it's a good opportunity but though your whole life shouldn't be about that yeah i, I think that i think I what bridge is getting to the <clears throat> crux of the issue in my opinion is like like happiness being focused driven by happiness versus being driven by success and accomplishment right like i think that's something that we as a family no 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 hold on mom i think that no i think there's truth to it because as i say how you live your days is how you live your life and if you're living your life if you are living your life constantly <laughs> striving for the next thing, there was a time, I think the video game thing, Bridge, that you brought up was so interesting. One of my friends recently pointed out to me that I treat everything like I'm playing a video game. She was like, Zoya, you treat working out like you're constantly leveling up. You treat academics like you're leveling up. There's no grace to just like experience life. And I have noticed that with myself, especially as an adult. And I think it, there's truth to what Bridge is saying. Like I would never, I don't know. It doesn't even, it doesn't even cross my mind to just like go somewhere crazy and do something crazy. And I don't know why. <laughs> but but, but that, there's nothing wrong with that. Like why does everybody have to do crazy things to like live is what I'm saying. Uh -huh. And, and on the issue of living for happiness and living for money, I think living, making money is what makes you happy. I mean, Bridge, you have three jobs right now. We're constantly trying to tell you to, re to reduce your workload. When you say live for happiness or live for money, the two cannot, the two are intertwined entirely is what I'm saying. You, you can't just say, I, I will do things like go on a, go to Six Flags every day, morning to night. You're not going to be satisfied. After three days, so you're going to be like, what did saying, I do with my I'm not life? even saying just go to Six Flags. That's, that's yeah. a, no, that's 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 Six Flags is a bridge. birthday party. That is, yeah, it is. Bridge. I'm saying you, something I even, think you get it. I think Zoya is a little hung up on it because she's also got a lot of California influence. And you know that that influences. No, I am the least hung up on it. In fact, everybody keeps telling me I need to be more like focused on my happiness and just existing i don't know no. though i think it's an interesting conversation though i think this I mean, is it's, in its isn't it rich a bunch of kids at stanford talking about this focus what? on your happiness and just exist you think they got to stanford just by existing that is a joke well, i think one thing that you realize by coming here is some people are just really unhappy like just really unhappy it's like mental illness is like the norm no, <laughs> I'll tell you it's what it is. I, I will tell you what it is. Social media has made it seem that if you're working hard and just living a boring existence, you must by definition be unhappy. That in order That's to be happy, true. I that fully is true. agree with that statement. I fully agree. I There's, fully agree. In, in the, in I would context. much rather if, if I would much rather be a, a student at Stanford and be miserable because I'm so brilliant that the world doesn't get me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I fundamentally agree with what you just said about um, the happiness thing. But I think in the context of what I'm trying to say is that <laughs> the way that you live your life is, is it's a very smart way to make money. It's a very smart way of living anyone's life. But it, it's not representative of like the majority of people. I'm saying the majority of people like to have fun. They like to do things that aren't whatever. And I think it all stems from the fact that you guys are immigrants. And coming from an immigrant standpoint, there's not room for error. There's no... 
There's no, you have to do everything perfectly. You, there is no room to make mistakes, to get, to break someone's nose and get the surgery. There's no room for that, right? Whereas from my perspective, I'm growing up as an American boy. I never, I never lived in any other state or any other country for country. So from my perspective, I get to see all the angles. Like I, there, there might be a little bit more room for That's me so than there is for you. I feel That's like I have a little bit more room to decide what I want to do than you guys did. Cause you guys only had one choice. But wow, you, that was you so should. true. That I mean, yes, Bridge and I do talk about this. No, often. Bridge is that was so true. It's about it's like it's the generational immigrant trauma thing. It's not trauma. That's the thing. Your generation will paint everything to be traumatic. It's not trauma. And it's yes, it is an immigrant thing. So you're right. But it is also an Indian thing. It is also a thing in a country where the vast majority are trying to survive. This, in fact, I would argue the opposite, that all these ideas of adventure and hanging yourself upside down just for fun is an extremely wealthy nation, one sided thing. Nobody back home is going to take all those risks, whether they're immigrant or not, because life is so precious. They, they fight every day just to live. They're not going to throw themselves off a mountain because somebody saw it on Instagram. Do you no, know I what get I'm that. Saying? I mean, I'm talking from a United States perspective, obviously, but I, yeah, yeah, United States, course, you got to be careful. Listen, United States is a, is a business. It's a corporation, as your dad loves to point out all the time. Everybody from <laughs> top to bottom, the educational institutions, the food companies, the adventure parks, the movies, everything is a business. At the end of the day, they are assessing risk in the idea of, okay, if two people die, but 10,000 people enjoyed it, it's worth the business for us. And my, it's my job and your dad's job to protect you for bring, from being that roadkill. But as you grow up, I agree with you, Bridge, that you have some levity in figuring out what's a risk worth taking or not for yourself. But in general, people who value their own lives and who are ambitious and want to do big things are extremely reluctant to get themselves in any high risk situation. And I'll tell you why. Because they get their thrill seeking adventure from the business. But, but all that thrill that you guys seek, I get that from selling out a room with a thousand people in Fort Worth, Texas, where I yes. had to find each person. I had to find each person individually. And that to me is a game. So I understand, Bridge. I'm not against. I mean, by the time you're 30, 35, you should decide the things that you want to risk. The things. Yeah, right now he's a child. The last so podcast, should... it was 25. You now made it 30. Yeah, we add <laughs> yeah, a decade it, every time. The kids are scaring me a little bit and, and only Veer. You see why Veer is quiet in this episode? Because he, in his mind, is a CEO right now. He's like, I ain't doing any of this foolishness. He's seeing it right now. He's like, I'm not talking about this. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to keep myself for my beverage empire that I'm building. And this, thank you, by the way, this is a great place to, to pause this episode. Thank you so much for watching, for listening, people. Thank you for joining us today. I hope we gave you something to think about how you guys vacation, the things you value, the risks you take in the name of fun. We want to hear all about it from you. Uh, please like, share, comment, watch this episode with your kids so you can hear what they think. Who do your kids agree with? Who do you agree with? If you're a kid, do your parents let you do whatever they want to do do you think we are right do you think our kids are right we want to hear all of us all of it and as we end every episode with good grades with garg a segment where each one of us assigns an a grade to somebody else about what they brought to this episode it can be education it can be entertainment it can be the moment of the episode so let's go with good grades with gargs who wants to go first me, yeah. me. Sorry. I, will I know go you're gonna steal mine time. i know no, you're gonna steal mine. it's so I'm gonna obviously go bridge you know what Pause it's it. so obviously bridge no stop it's so obviously bridge this episode i thought that like what the perspective that bridge gave was so eloquent on the difference between mom and dad's upbringing versus ours as American children. I especially love that you pushed back on this idea that we have to live like perfectly successful, perfectly risk managed lives. I think that that's also something that you bring to our family. Um, in particular, beyond this episode, you push me to want to do things that I maybe wouldn't otherwise do because I follow what mom says for the most part. And I think that that is original thinking on your part and very reflective of who you are as a person too. Okay. Who wants to go next? I'll go next. I have to okay. give mine. I mean, bridge was very good, but I'll give mine to Veer 
Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, he spoke as usual little, but when he spoke, it was important. He remembered our, um, you know, the tree lining thing that we enjoyed uh, as a family a lot, which I thought was really cute. Uh-oh. Okay, good job. Thank you. Who wants to go next? Veer, Bridge? I'm still kind of thinking. I'll go next. Um, okay. I'm going to give it to mom. Um, because, like, she doesn't agree with taking as many fun risks as us. But she, she like, finds ways to enjoy life by doing things that us like that we wouldn't consider fun like selling out a room like she she finds fun in that which we wouldn't we would we would rather go zip lining and stuff whereas she she finds more fun in selling and doing stuff that is more like work related to us Thank you, Veer. I knew it because Veer and I are vibing on the C-suite level right now. Wait, I'm also on that level. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you just... Okay, I'll go next. You just went pro bungee jumping, so like, okay. <laughs> I didn't go pro bungee. I just said that the idea of bungee jumping that Bridge proposed was actually very idyllic, and I wish I had wanted that. Okay, all right. Okay, I'll go next. Bridge, go. I'm also going to give my A grade to mom for two separate reasons in this episode specifically. One, I think you're... Um, analysis of happiness and how it's viewed in America and portrayed in social media was really accurate. I think that was a very important thing to bring up. I think more people need to think about that when they talk about their own happiness and reflect on themselves. And I think too, a lot of the reason why I'm able to take these risks is because most of the time when they go wrong, you're always there. Even if you don't agree with them, you're always there to help just in case they go wrong, which I think that's the major reason why I'm giving you the A because I just, I, it's a, I have a lot more breathing room because of that. Aww. Thank you, Bridge. It's always you and me in the end, Bridge. Although with your broken <laughs> nose, it was me. What who happened to me? Hospital, I thought yeah, I was it, was, it was it was dad. dad. It was dad. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was dad. And then, but dad, yes, it was actually entirely dad. And dad is there. He just doesn't talk about it as much as I do, which is you know, which is common. yeah, I know. But he's there, and we are there always, and and that is part of our commitment as boring parents who only focus on boring things. Is that instead of going on independent journeys and drinking ourselves, we are around to make sure that you guys are taken care of, and happily, no one here is complaining. Like Shalab, are you complaining if I said that as a recap of our life? No. Not at all. We're so happy. We would rather be there just puttering around you guys than doing anything else with our lives. But we're boring that way. You know, social media will make it look like we have no life because we're not going out and drinking boring and going on. Boring is so a- underrated. It's so yeah. underrated. I you think you're completely to- right. Like, I love being boring, honestly. Be bored, be live, sleep, drink water. Being do- boring? I think no, be, be bored. Did they, did they just... Okay, she described continue. drink water as yeah. an <laughs> I know it seems that way, but for somebody who travels as much as I do, you don't. I don't think you realize what a luxury it is to even drink water. I work every day. I'm at a train station, at a bus stop, at an airport. I'm in long car rides. I'm in movie theaters. I'm in little dinky theaters where there's no bathroom facilities. This is actually something for me. Being home and just being able to drink water without panicking is a luxury. Like, and I, and I find joy in it. I don't need to go out and buy a $20 drink at, on a rooftop. I don't care about the rooftop. I'm just happy to sit in my own house that I work really hard to build and that that's okay. I'm saying that finding joy in the end of the day, the joy is within all this yes. other stuff. Yoga. At the end of the day. Oh, what? <laughs> that is a yoga that principle. Is, that is like, that is like the oh most yogi God. thing ever. They stole that from me. Oh my. That's How like can in they the yoga handbook. Thousands of years old yoga, and you're like just saying that you came up with it on your own. But okay, I did. Yeah. Well, I did come up with it. Your mom, who's anyway, your the, My A grade uh, undeniably today goes to Bridge. It's, he is the star of the episode today because he the 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 very. Very simple and eloquent recap of risk, why we can take risk, why we can take risk, the impact of it, and and him agreeing with me at the right points makes him eligible 
for the A grade eligible. today. And eligible. I want everybody who is watching this episode, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you guys can tell us in the comment section who you give your A grade to because I want to know what you're thinking. We all want to know what you're thinking. My kids want to know, do you go skiing? Do you go bungee jumping? If you're a team staycation like me, tell us what tricks you have of making life fun at home that don't involve money and don't involve travel. This yeah. has been a great episode for us. I almost feel like we had some sort of therapy between the five of us. Thank <sighs> you so much for tuning in and can't wait to have you back again. If you like our work, please share, like and subscribe because we're trying to grow organically. This is a family run episode from top to bottom. There are no sponsors. We don't do any of that stuff. We try Try to be as unfiltered as possible. And thank you for giving us your pre precious time. Everybody say bye to our episode. Bye. 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 bye.